a different road. Chapter 28, one hand on the rail. It's 10 miles by road to the rail yard at the edge of town, but only seven cutting across the prairie as we've done. We haven't been at full gallop all the way, but still moving along at a good clip. Dakota's breathing easy and relaxed beneath me. I slow him to a walk as we approach the depot. His long, tireless strides brought us here even quicker than I'd expected, quick enough to outdistance any pursuit, assuming anyone saw me going, which is not likely. It's so early, just before dawn, that no one other than us is stirring. The streets are empty. I look up at the station clock. If I have remembered the schedule right, there'll be a freight train here soon. It's not a passenger stop, but it has a mail car, so it will be slowing down to a near halt to drop off one mailbag and grab the other waiting on the platform. I tie Dakota's reins to the hitching post near the watering trough in front of the livery stable. It's where Pop and I brought him and the other horses back in early April. So much has happened since then. Thinking about it just, thinking about it all just about makes my head spin. But there's no time for conjugating now. I've been, I've, I've a train to catch. I run my hands along the big horse's sides, pat him a couple of times. He's not lathered up from his run. Seven miles is nothing for a cavalry mount. He should be okay without being rubbed down. He lowers his head down so I can stroke his forehead. Good boy, I say. I push myself away from him and shift the pack on my shoulder. Dakota is dipping his head to drink from the trough. You'll be okay. They'll bring you back to the school. Don't know if I'll see you again, but I'll be remembering you. I haven't yet heard a train whistle, but from the position of the hands on the station clock, the freight I'm counting on should be here soon. I bend to place my left hand on the nearest iron rail, feel the vibration of the metal. Yes! I walk down along the track, staying low to keep from being seen. I almost trip over a pile of tools left by some careless workman, a five foot long claw bar, a track chisel and a wrench. A hundred yards on, I stop, position myself in the brush at just the right place to make the run alongside the train and swing myself up onto a freight car before it picks up too much speed. The screech of the train whistle cuts through the still dawn air so loud it would make most men jump, but not an experienced knight of the road like me. I can't quite see the train yet, but its smoke is visible, rising high in the blue morning sky. The clacking of its wheels is getting louder and louder, so loud as it comes into sight that almost nothing else can be heard. The freight's almost reached me. I turn and start to run. The engine passes me, its driver looking straight ahead. I let the coal car pass, then another freight car. My feet are pounding on the loose stones along the track. Now I reach my left arm, the one closest to the train to grab the ladder side rail. My hand, sh my hand takes the firm hold of the rail parallel to it and I lift my feet. I climb up three rungs, fast as squirrels scooting up an oak tree. I'm on my way.